And so I want to start with a question and a show of hands, so you'll raise your hand if this is accurate to you. Have you ever been traveling or going to a place where you needed to find directions? If that has ever happened in your life, please raise your hand. I'm trying to see who is awake still. If you've ever needed to look up directions for someone, nice and high, raise them nice and high. All right, good. Most of us have had that experience. We're not always the best with directions, and children, kids, adventurers, raise your hand if you've ever been traveling with your parents and they've gotten lost. Raise them nice and high. I want to rain some families exposed here. A couple of multiple hands going up in the back. But the idea is, when we start to travel, there is a place we want to go. There is a place we want to be. And when we think about our kids, when we think about the young people and, and you little guys in the church, you guys get up so cute, and you guys can say things and get everyone listening to you that an adult can't. Right? You guys can go, good morning, church. It's time for prayer. And, everyone, and everyone's like, oh. You know, we get up and it's time to pray. And they're like, okay. But you guys have such an amazing thing. And so we have all of these, I guess, goals and, and things for you and directions. And we have, you know, as parents, as, as church leaders, as, as supporting friends, we have all these dreams for where God is going to take you. But the coolest thing is that God has his own plan for each of your lives. And the Bible says that, that the church and the family can play a part of, in that. Proverbs 22, verse 6, tells us that train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And it is the thing that there is a direction in life. If you look at the Bible, when following God takes you places, right? The skit talked about Abraham. God came up and said, go to the place that I will show you. He talked to Moses and said, go to Pharaoh and then go out of Egypt. He talked to Joshua and said, listen, go into the promised land. You look at Paul where he took him and said, and sent him on missionary journeys. And then you look at the Great Commission where it says, go out and, you know, make disciples and teach people and baptize. And so the thing is, when you follow God, it's not a boring stay-at-home thing. How many of you guys, how many of you kids have ever been bored because you had to stay at home? Raise your hands. You wanted to go somewhere, but you, you know, and home wasn't that exciting. The cool thing about following God is he takes you places and he has a destination and a journey for us. And so we want to make sure with our young people that we start them off in the right direction, that we train them in their youth. We, cha we, tra ah, we train them when they're still enthusiastic and encourage, I mean, you, look, you listen to the choir sing, and like arms are flying, and people are going, and they're just so happy to praise God. And we want to train them while they still have that energy, before they lose some of that enthusiasm. So how do we train them? Kids, how do you follow God? How do you take that GPS and that guidance for your life? Because no matter where we're trying to go, no matter which way you use, if you use a GPS on your phone, or if you use a map on your table that you write down, or if you take really sketchy directions from another person, the fact is that there is guidance available to us to get where we need to go. And so we're going to look briefly at the Bible. And the first one is that it says in Psalms 119 verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is really hard to get where you want to go if you can't see anything. And if it's pitch black, that means you're not going to see much. It's like this. If we got in our cars and you painted your windshield completely black so that no light could come through your windshield, you are, it is highly unlikely that you will end up driving to your destination. You'll drive somewhere and you'll drive into something, but it's probably not where you want to go. And so the cool thing about God is he gives us the Bible. And so this is something, you know, you can say to little kids and be like, kids, you need to read your Bible. But kids, teens, young adults, older adults, slightly older adults, we all need to read our Bible. That is the roadmap. That is that GPS. And so the first thing I want to encourage you is just, you know, read your Bible. For you kids that are doing memory verses, you know, memorize your Bibles. Learn the stories because there's a lot of cool stuff in there right? But the most important thing 
is that they said, we want to answer the call to be faithful. Faithful to who? Right? Faithful to Jesus. If you want to get where God is wanting to take you, if we want to be training our children, the most important thing is we have to connect them with Christ. In John 14, verse 6, God talks a lot about directions. He gives a lot of kind of, kind of pointers on that. And he says, Jesus is talking, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. And so what Jesus is saying, he says, listen, you want directions? It all goes through me. Our scripture reading talked about how Jesus was the vine and we are the branches. The concept that we don't get anything done unless we're connected to Jesus. And so I encourage you guys, as you read your Bibles, because we're going to read our Bibles, right? We're going to read our Bibles, right? Amen. As you read your Bibles and you learn more about Jesus and you pray to him and you see the things that he's going to do in your life, that you connect more and more with him and you watch as how he becomes your way. He becomes that avenue that you meet God. But the next, last thing I want to talk about, and this is what I want to talk about to the adults, right? Um, and it's the last point, not a very long talk. Have you ever taken directions from someone who doesn't know how to give directions? Right? Sometimes you sit there and you're talking to someone, they're like, you know, I know, I, I know the way there, just drive for like 30 seconds at 40 kilometers an hour, and then when you see the bush that's shaped like a dinosaur, I mean, you use your imagination, you turn right, and then you're going to go down a hill or two, and then you're going to turn left at the second stoplight or stop sign, and then you're going to get on a highway, but then you're going to get off the highway, but then you've got to get back on the highway, and then you'll be there. And sometimes the directions, they're not always clear to us. They're comp in, the per in the mind of the person that's giving them, they know. They know exactly what that dinosaur-shaped bush looks like. They know exactly how many hills and how long it takes to drive. But sometimes the directions don't make sense to the person that is now trying to follow them. And sometimes as adults, we, we talk to the kids and we're like, kids, we're going to train you, we're going to teach you, and it's this, you just got to do this, 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 this. And they look at us sometimes and they're like, huh? Right? Have you ever done that, kids? Have you, has your parents ever, like, said something to you and you're like, what? Yeah, I see some kids nodding, right? And that's not even a kid thing. You have, there, I'm sure all of us have had conversations where you're like, uh-huh. Yeah. But when that happens, you know, when you say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Or... That didn't make sense. And they're like, no, they re after they repeat it a couple times, you know what they usually say or what you usually say when you're the one giving directions? You know what? Just follow me. I'm going there. Just get in the car and follow after me. Right? This is also a spiritual thing. In Matthew 4, when, when Jesus came up, he didn't just, you know, preach and do all those things. When he comes to the disciples and he calls them to follow him, he says, well, what I just said. He says, follow me. Then again, he talks to the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler is like, hey, I want to go to heaven. What do I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, listen, sell all your stuff. and do it." But he doesn't stop there. He doesn't say, just do this, do this, and do this. Then he says, follow me. Then in John 14, the disciples come up to him. I think it's Philip. He says, you know, just, just show us the Father, right? Show us what God looks like, Jesus. And Jesus says, you know, have you not been with me this whole time? Right? He's saying, have you not been following me this whole time? I've been showing you the Father. And then in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul is writing, he says, listen, imitate me, right? Imitate what I do because I'm imitating Jesus. Follow me because I'm following the leader. Sometimes in life, in order for our kids, and this, this is not limited to parents, Right? You cannot, you, you don't have to be a parent to have an influence in a young person's life. But what we show our children, the Willowdale kids here, that can be directions to some of them. Sometimes they won't understand all of the teachings, they won't understand all the things yet, but they will watch us. And as we follow Christ, 
and they follow after us, they will experience that. Do you want to show a kid the joy that Christ has in their life and the happiness that he will bring to them? Experience Christ yourself and show them in your own life what Christ is doing for you. If you want them to look forward to Sabbath morning, be happy on Sabbath morning. If you want them to, you know, enjoy serving in church, show them how much joy you get because you serve the church. Show them and use Jesus' method. He didn't just tell them. He lived with them. He spent time with them. And through them following, they were changed. And by us following Jesus, by us answering the call to be faithful, we now show, right, better than any, you know, rule book or anything like that, we now show our children the joys of following Jesus. And so let us follow, let us be an example to the kids in this church. Let us be an example of what it looks like when you're listening to that GPS, the Bible. And let's show them how amazing it is to follow God. Amen.